Hi, Bobcats. In this last video out of Chapter 7, we're going to look at how you write uh, names and formulas for acids. If you'll refer back to the nomenclature summary flowchart that was on the back side of the original periodic table I passed out on the, the first, uh, towards the beginning of class, um, you'll find that the very first column on that nomenclature summary flowchart is all about acids. So uh, the next column on it was alkanes, and then there was a column uh, for covalent or molecular compounds, and then the last column was for ionic. So we are finally uh, going back and picking up um, that acids column now. We're going to learn how to write formulas for names and how to write names from formulas. When we write the formulas for acids, we're going to treat them as ionic compounds. And you need for the charge on the cation, the positive ion, to cancel the charge on the anion, the negative ion. If the charges don't cancel, you've got a crisscross to figure out what subscripts to use. Now, there is a restriction here in that the cation will always be H+. That's what makes it an acid. The anion will vary for hydrochloric acid. It'll be Cl- for nitric acid. It'll be nitrate ion. Um, but just keep in mind that the charges do, excuse me, do have to cancel out, or if they don't cancel, you'll have to crisscross. As an example, let's work on creating acids from these anions. So this first anion is bromide. We use the IDE ending when there are no oxygens present. To turn this into an acid, the cation has to be H+, and then it pairs up with the bromide ion. Plus one and minus one cancel out. So cleaning that up, the final answer for this acid is HBr. For the next one, the phosphate ion, we need to also pair it up with hydrogen ions. We'll have H plus paired up with PO4 minus three, and plus one and minus three don't cancel out, so we're gonna end up crisscrossing. So we bring the three down on the hydrogen, and we bring the one down on the phosphate, cleaning that up and getting rid of the parentheses since we don't need them when it's just a one, we end up with H3PO4 for this acid. For the next one, we have the chlorate ion. And to make that into an acid, we'll pair it up with H plus ion. We've got chlorate, ClO3 minus, plus one and minus one cancel out. So we have for our final answer for the formula HClO3. Then our fourth example is the carbonate ion. And H plus pairs up with it. And notice we've got a minus two charge on carbonate. So we're going to have to crisscross. When we crisscross with polyatomics, we put it in parentheses, but we don't really need the one. So cleaning up our final answer is H2CO3. And just a little nomenclature review. Um, when we have oxygens present with our polyatomic ions, like we do in two, three, and four, we have the ATE ending. But when it's just the element by itself, we'll have the IDE ending when we name the anions. When we name acids, there are going to be two types of acids that I hold you responsible for naming. One of those is binary and the other is ternary. This refers to how many elements are present. Binary acids have two elements present and ternary acids have three. Now, whether it's binary or ternary, one of those elements has to be hydrogen ion. And then another element will be a nonmetal. With the ternary acids, that third element will be oxygen. Um, just note that when you have um, oxygen and a nonmetal, that is actually going to be in the form of one of our polyatomic ions, like nitrate, carbonate, chlorate, like we saw in the previous slide. Okay, so when we go to name one of these binary acids that's just hydrogen and one other element, the pattern for naming it is we're going to say hydro and then some sort of a stem from the name of the element. And then we're going to stick ick on the end of that and then the word acid. 
So for instance, if we have HCl, that becomes hydrochloric acid. So there's the hydro prefix, the chlor is the something from the element name, then we put ic on the end of it and acid. If we have H2S, again that's binary because we have two elements, it'll be hydro sulfuric acid. Now why do we call it sulfuric and not sulfic? Um, I don't have a good answer for that one. It's just something you get used to in chemical nomenclature. I'll just assure you that since I'm quizzing and testing you in a multiple choice format, you don't need to worry about, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to force you to pick between hydrosulfuric acid and hydrosulfic acid. Um, so you, you don't need to worry about it. I'm just gonna give you the correct derivation of the element uh, name into the, the acid name. With ternary acids, um, the pattern for naming is a little bit different. We do not use hydro. We're gonna start with some sort of a stem from the nonmetal's name, and then say ic and acid. So it looks a whole lot like the binary acids just without the hydro out front. So for instance, um, this example here, we've got uh, HNO3, that's the nitrate ion. So it becomes nitric acid. So let's work a couple examples uh, of these acids and how we would name them. Um, these are the same acids that we wrote formulas from, from their anions a couple slides back. We started with Br minus, we added an H plus to it and got HBr. This is binary, there are only two elements, so we'll start with hydro, and then bromine gets changed to brome, and then we're gonna put ic on the end of that, and then acid. In the case of this next one, it's ternary. We've got hydrogen and a polyatomic ion, so three elements total. With the ternary acids, we don't put hydro out front. The phosphate ion becomes uh, phosphoric and acid. HClO3, uh, this is the chlorate polyatomic ion, so we do not use hydro. We just start with the chlor and we use the ic ending and this becomes chloric acid. And then last but not least, we have the carbonate ion in this acid, so this becomes carbonic acid. So all of these have that ic and the very first one that only has two elements has hydro stuck out in front of it. So our objectives for this video were to write formulas from the names of acids and to write names from the formulas of acids. Uh, when we're writing formulas, you want to treat them um, as ionic and get the charges to cancel out. So we often end up having to crisscross for writing the names, if you have two elements, you're going to use the hydro prefix, then something about the uh, nonmetal element's name, we're gonna put ic on the end of that and then write the word acid. And if you've got three elements, we're gonna drop the hydro um, from, the the, from the binary pattern and we're just gonna have something about the element name followed by ic and acid.